Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Saturday, the 24th of February 2024. Today was match day. Today was the first match day of Neil Harris's second spell at Millwall, and it went exactly as most of us expected it to. Um, I mentioned in yesterday's video that I thought we would win. I had no doubts that we would win, and that the score would be 2 1. and Lo and behold, here we go. I won a load of money and the score was 2-1. Um, yeah. I genuinely don't understand how there are so many people out there who can't see what is plainly in front of their faces. That Joe Edwards was a disaster. That Neil Harris it ain't that bad. And... Um, that he would galvanise the players and get them get them to get a result. Like it's it was it's so obvious, it's untrue. And I would say this if if anyone at Mill was listening to this, except for Aldo, you stop listening, Aldo, this isn't for you. This change was so um dramatic and positive in a good way. Just imagine how you could change Mill Wall. By getting rid of Aldo and getting a decent director of football in. Just imagine what you could do. But anyway, that's for another day. Now, moving on to the match report from millfc.co.uk. Mill clinch vital away win at St Mary's. Uh, yes. Mill gained a price of Skybet Championship win on Saturday afternoon as they defeated Southampton 2 one, Jafet Tanganga's first Mill goal gave the Lions an early lead at St Mary's, and although Che Adams equalised for the Saints, Simon Fleming's penalty just before the break um, proved to be the moment that would earn three points. Head coach and manager, manager Neil Harris, made numerous changes to the lineup to face the Saints with uh, Danny McNamara. Yeah, this is the thing. Everyone was like, "What's he going to do? What's he going to do? What team is he going to put out there?" Um, so he played uh, Danny McNamara, Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell came back in. Ryan Longman, Michael Abafemi, and George Honeyman all coming in as Murray Wallace, Tom Bradshaw, Casper Nor, Romain Essay, and Wes Harding dropped to the bench. Uh, five minutes in, the Lions were handed a perfect start as they took the lead through Tanganga. The defender bravely beaten Saints goalkeeper Gavin Bazuma uh, to the ball to loop ahead over the stopper and into an empty net, sending the near 2,800 fans behind the opposite goal. Wild! Uh, Southampton applied pressure to Mill following that opener, but the Lions were robust in the defensive duties. Honeyman and Tanganga picking up bookings, whilst the Tottenham Hotspur lone lead in had to head off the Liners and equaliser looked near. Uh, Neil Harris's side, though, looked quick on the break with a charge forward on 17 minutes ending, with McNamara curling the ball past the far post. He was playing at left back today, Danny Manuel, playing at left back. Uh, Tanganga was again the man to rescue Millwall. Southampton looked to cut the lines open at the midway point of the half, with David Brooks then curling over as the yard foul mark came and went. With 34 minutes on the clock, however, the Saints were level as Adams nodded a Stuart Armstrong cross past Matija Sarkic. Um, have a look back at the goal. Look at the highlights. Uh, do you see what, what I see and what I think Neil Harris saw? Uh, so the cross comes in for Southampton. When you see the player who crosses it, what's Oberfemi doing? This is on the edge of our area. This is on. It's this in a danger zone, and and Oberfemi is just dawdling, and as he goes, he's like dawdling towards the player. Like you need to be quicker than that. Like you're a striker and you're on the edge of our area. Um, you need to be. Like, you need to start acting like a defender when you're in that situation. You're not a striker like in the in the opposition's half. You need to do something. I think, um, even though later on, as we'll read in this match report, he had the shot that got the penalty. I think maybe because of that situation, uh, he was hauled off uh, at half time, or maybe something was said to him, um, and he didn't respond well to that. So I don't know. There are rumours about him behind the scenes, um, but uh, hey ho. Um, Tanganga was again the man to rescue Mill with Southampton to cut the lines open at the midway point of the half 
Uh, oh no, I've already read that. I've read that. Uh, the hosts looked to up the ante further before the half-time break. Mill had to scramble away from their own six-yard box with five minutes left to play. But on 43 minutes, the Lions were rewarded a penalty as Oberfemi's shot struck a Southampton hand. Fleming stepping up to dis dispatch the spot kick into the bottom left-hand corner and regain the lead. A lovely jubbly. Uh, Carl Walker-Peters struck uh, straight at Sarkic moments after Bradshaw replaced Oberfemi at the half-time interval. With Sarkic then springing into action once more as Armstrong's curler was stopped by the goalkeeper. Adams then prodded an effort over as the home side started the second half on the front foot. Uh, Norton Cuffey was brought on in place of Longman on 62 minutes as Harris opted to freshen up. Mills options out wide with the next major chance going the way of the hosts seven minutes later, but substitute Joe Rothwell's tame attempt was gathered by Sarkic. Another substitute, Adam Armstrong, edited over as the final ten minutes came into view, whilst at the other end, Fleming's left foot drive was into the arms of Bazuma. Uh, Denor replaced the hard working Fleming with six minutes remaining, and there were just half of the, uh, and there were just half of those left when Sarkic had to dive to his left to push Armstrong's header. Around the post for a corner. Yeah, that was a brilliant save. That was absolutely brilliant. Uh, in five minutes of stoppage time, Mitchell's excellent works out of a chance for the Lions on the break. But Bradshaw's through ball to the midfielder was poor. Uh, but that did not matter as Thomas Bramwell, uh, that's a referee, blew time on a great away day for the Lions soon after. And Neil Harris's first team was Sarkic, Leonard, Tanganga, Cooper, McNamara, Honeyman, Saville, Mitchell, Longman. Uh, Oberfemi, Fleming, the subs were Norton Cuffey on for Longman, uh, Bradshaw on for Oberfemi, and Denora on for, for Fleming. And the unused substitutes would be Akoski, Wallace, Watmore, Imaku, Essay, and Harding. Um, so, there you go. Fantastic stuff. Uh, 2,792 away fans in a crowd of 30,600. So, Fantastic scenes at the Samaris. Um Like I said, I, this was expected by me. I have, I have no idea what's going on with some of the fans. They spat the dummy out. The Harris is back. They spat the dummy out. The Edward, Edwards got sacked. I look at his fucking record. What 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 are you smoking? What I think it might be. I may, I'm, I think it might be that the ones that are on Twitter all the time. And they're living in that world of Twitter, and they don't they're not living in the real world they can't they're like blinkered they can't see the bigger picture. I think it's that I don't know what's going on, but uh yeah, so this is one win now we've got that's one win down we've got to get another four wins and we 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 should be good, but it might not be that easy because even though we won, which is good uh the teams around us won as well. The Sheffield Wednesday won today. Queen's Park Rangers won today. Although, I think they were playing Rotherham, weren't they? Yeah, they, so they were losing to Rotherham. It was 1-0. And they came back to win 2-1. Um, and then Huddersfield won today. The only two teams uh, in this bottom what, third who lost was uh, Birmingham, or Rotherham, and Stoke. So, Maybe Stoke gonna completely collapse, but uh, or maybe they've waited too long before they make it action. Um, don't know, but we still need to keep on winning because we ain't clear. We didn't even get clear. We were still one point off, one point below the team that's in twenty second, even though we've gone up a place because it was we were one point above QPR, but QPR have jumped out now, and we're just one point above Stoke now. Obviously. Um, the situation has got a lot better that if we did get in the relegation places like for one match week it, like I wouldn't have any doubt that we could still get out of it uh, in the next week it would like it wouldn't be it would be a temporary thing um, so we see how we go and then the rumours um, today that uh, the Watford manager might be getting a sack uh, Valerian, so we'll see. That's our next game. The Watford at home. I'm sure it's going to be a full house to welcome um, a Super Neil Harris back to the den. Um, yes, let's hope we get that win, and then uh, we'll only need another three more wins to get up to 48. I think that should be it then. 
unless this is a absolutely crazy, 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 crazy season. And just everyone keeps on winning. Because you see Rotherham are cut adrift. And Leicester are like adrift at the top as well. Or, to be fair, most of the top four. There's a massive gap between fourth and fifth. Um, so it might be one of those leagues where, because that happens, the rest of the teams are pretty close. So we'll see. But if we keep on winning, I mean, it, it shouldn't be a problem. So... There you go. Now, moving on to the post-match comments. First, with the suburbnews.co.uk. Harris praises Mill supporters after huge win at Saints. Neil Harris paid tribute to Mill's travelling contingent, who cheered, on the lines, um, cheered the lines onto a memorable 2-1 victory today at Southampton. Just under 2,800 followers made the trip to the South Coast to witness Harris's second coming as Mill boss after he returned to the club this week in the wake of Joe Edwards' dismissal. They were celebrating within five minutes thanks to Tanganga's header, which broke the deadlock and stunned Premier League hopeful Saints. And even though Che Adams equalised on 34 minutes, it was the Lions who went in at the break ahead thanks to Zion Fleming's penalty uh, on the stroke of half-time. Uh, awarded uh, after Jan Belenak had handled Michael Oberfemi's F, uh, attempt. That was good enough to secure a first league win since New Year's Day and give a huge boost to the Lions' hopes of beating the drop. A delighted Neil Harris said, Firstly, I, I want to place on record a thank you to the fan base. Uh, not just for my work on that they gave me on a touchline, but to support my players like that. That's what we need. Uh, we need that between now and the end of the season. And they need that performance and they need that result. Of course they do. Uh, in unison, it's a brilliant football result today for our football club. I can't praise my players highly enough for that level of this discipline and structure. Uh, Southampton may well have ambitions of an instant return to the top flight, but Mill were relatively comfortable in the second half, aside from a top Matija Sarkic save late on, which denied Adam, Adam Armstrong. Harris said, Our oh, Southampton are a really good side, as we know. Uh, we looked at the game plan to how we can try and impose ourselves on the game and cause problems. We quickly realised it was going to be a tough afternoon for us, so you have to find a way. Mill teams have to find a way. Uh, they always have to find a way. I always had to find a way in teams I played in, and sometimes that's that's the what you got to do. Uh, you rely on your shape, your organisation, your spirit, and your togetherness. Some of the performances today were probably some of the best performances of the season from individuals. When you need a moment, we've got Zion's quality to have the calmness to take the spot kick on a stroke of half time. But then there was Matty Sar kick as well. I'm here to give good guys uh, guys confidence and support, and, and that save will do him the world of good. Exactly, there you go. That's um, that's good stuff there. Uh, now, also from SuffolkNews.co.uk, Mill boss happy for players to enjoy the moment with supporters at Southampton. Well, yeah, do they not look happier? Do they not look happier? Like, come on. Are you... Are you how, what is the problem? How have you not understood yet? Do you understand now? Do you understand now? Neil Harris says he was happy to step back from the line after George Savile prompted the returning gaffer to salute the fans of St Mary's today. There were huge cheers in the away end at the final whistle after the first half goals from Tanganga and Fleming secured a memorable 2-1 victory on the road at promotion hopeful Southampton. That was Mill's first win in nine games and a huge sense of relief and celebration immediately afterwards saw all of the squad head over to the 2,800 Lions who made the trip from South East London. Savile was keen for Harris to take the plaudits but the boss insisted it was the player's moment to enjoy more than he's. He said, I was important to show, or I showed the appreciation from me to the supporters uh, but for me uh, that is the fans that win and the players. I've just got here so I'm alright, I'm, I'm in a good place, Harris added. Uh, we needed that as a football club. Uh, the dressing room needed it and the fans needed it. So for me, it was more important that the players got the reception, not me. Sav is a mill man. I thought he was excellent today. He was brilliant. Him and Billy uh, in the middle of the park were so good. Uh, they were so competitive, so aggressive in their approach and their positional play was so good. It was a nice touch. Uh, George understands how football works. Results elsewhere, though, mean Mill remain one point above the drop zone with Stoke now occupying the final relegation spot after their two undefeated Cardiff. Harris said in his post-match press conference he wasn't yet aware of results elsewhere, pointing out that as welcome as today's success at St Mary's was, it was only the start of what will hopefully be a strong end to the campaign. He explained, oh, it pushes us uh, another game forward. It's, it's important that we get some points on the board. Uh, we know we need points. We can only take one step at a time. That's all we can do. One game at a time. 
Uh, all we've achieved today is chemistry between supporters uh, and the pitch again. And that's a start. Uh, we've got three more points on the board, belief in the group, confidence in the group and, and goals for individuals. Harris began the week in charge at Cambridge United and ended it back at the club he served so well as both a player and manager in the past. It was certainly the perfect start to life back in the mill dugout following his departure in 2019. Uh, but the returning boss is determined those in the squad who don't know him yet take on board what is expected between now and the end of the season. Harris said, oh, It's been a whirlwind for me the last few days, uh, but for players as well, the eight or nine lads I gave me all debuts to uh, know me very well, and I've stayed in touch with them over the years. The other lads are having to learn about me quickly, my character and my personality, my spirit as well, to win the games of football, and, and they will learn quickly. Um, and that is the end. They will learn quickly. I wonder if Obafemi learned quickly that uh, you don't fuck around on the edge of the box and you got to fucking close the guy down. Um, we'll see if he starts in the next game. Uh, Mill boss Neil Harrison being pushed into the spotlight post-match by George Savile. This might mention... I haven't checked these yet, uh, so I've just pulled them up. This might be similar to what was said... Um, Yeah, I think it is actually. Um, yeah, it's exactly, exactly the same. Same quotes. This is a few pictures. Um, yeah. Uh, my apologies for that. That's from the South London Press, London News Online. Uh, but this one, I think this might be a bit of what we just heard about the nine players. Yeah, so this is the same as well. It's just... Uh, the South London Press are split into two. And then, so we're going to finish then with this from the South London Press, which I know hasn't been mentioned before. This is from the opposition manager. The Southampton boss, Russell Martin. Goals we conceded against Millwall were rubbish and cost us. Uh, Russell Martin was very frustrated with his Southampton side after they were beaten 2-1 by Millwall on Saturday afternoon. Uh, Neil Harris secured victory in his first game of his second spell in charge of the Lions, thanks to goals from Tanganga and Fleming. Uh, the win was Mills' first in any competition since New Year's Day. However, it's back-to-back -back defeats for Martin and Southampton who lost ground in the automatic promotion race. We conceded two crap goals, said Martin. We have three massive chances and we should score. There are a few chances when you're playing a team with such a low block and so many bodies behind the ball. We had to score and we didn't. Uh, we conceded two rubbish goals from set plays. The free kick's the softest free kick I've seen. Uh, Zion's a guy I like and I looked at when he was when I was at Swansea, but we couldn't afford him. He fell over a lot today and got a lot of free kicks. It allowed them to get the ball in the box. How we don't deal with that, I do not know. It's a floated cross and it loops into our goal. The home side got back on level terms when Che Adams slipped in between Jake Cooper and Danny McNamara to finish past Matija Saki. Despite that, they failed to push home their possession into clear-cut chances. Fleming restored Mill's lead on a penalty spot before half-time. A frustrating Martin added, oh, we get back in the game and then give foul away in the middle of the pitch, giving their goalkeeper a chance to send all the players into our box. We don't clear it twice, we half deal with it, but at that point it ends up being crossed into our box and we give away a penalty. That's the story of the game. Well, we had five or four or five big chances and dominated the game completely. Mill had nothing really other than the set pieces. Fleming had a shot in the second half. We've given them something to hold on to because we've conceded rubbish goals. Whatever shape or formation you play, you can't give us up goals like that away. It's pathetic. Indeed, indeed. And he makes a very good point then. The goal, the goals are from set plays. Although, can you really call a penalty a set play? I mean, it's, it's not really a set play, is it? But, um, yeah, there you go. And uh, on that note, that is it. We're back. We're back, baby. Uh, Millwall is Millwall, and I, I said before, Millwall is Millwall, you don't change Millwall, Millwall changes you, and uh, this is how it has to be, uh, you can tweak it a little bit, you can make it a bit more fancy, with fancier players, but uh, you, need, you need the Millwall chaos, you need the energy, you need the passion, and you need uh, direct football, not tippy happy bullshit on that note thank you for watching and goodbye